Who can I go? I've got one thing concerning the uniformity of our kids getting sent home and then getting a negative test and going to a doctor, getting a doctor's excuse to come back in. And some administrations are not letting them in due to the wording and others are letting them in due to the professionalism of the American Medical Association, that doctor writing on there that child can come in. We need a consistent format. And I just got off the phone texting with a doctor just now and the rumor is that the ADP has told them to stand down on writing readmission letters and I just told them the BS and told us there's nothing even in his documentation from emails, alerts or anything else. Um, and he, him and several other doctors in this area are very frustrated with some of our administration calling their offices and rating them on their profession. I was trying to sign notes and examine these kids as if they had saying that they do when they have strep throat or the flu, a common cold, or a physical play football. Yeah, we've got people that we employ <coughs> trying to tell the medical profession how to do their job. It's time for that to cease. We can stop that for a while, but it's like people, it's time to then, then, then get involved. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Okay. And, and, and once again, it stops here. Sure. Well, let me tell you this the ADPH has released, and they're having another update to our toolkit on Monday. They're going to have another webinar and another update. So part of the problem Monday. is. That's not this week. No, no, it's okay. But what not yesterday. <coughs> no. Yes, we're returning to school after their parents took days off work. I'm talking about E days, it's not about COVID days. Mm -hmm. They take it on to get their test, they're negative because exposure doesn't mean positive. If that's the case, DCH would be shut down, Walmart would be shut down, every place, but the economy would be at a dead zero. Now, I just want to, you know, whatever it takes, and I don't know what it's going to take. Because we've got people in schools that are calling medical professions and telling them that they are the responsibility and that they are the reason why there's an outbreak in these schools. We don't have an outbreak in our schools. We do not have an outbreak in our schools, period. We've got overreaction going on in our schools, rampant like a wildfire in Colorado, California, but we do not have an outbreak in our schools. Well, when you have a glad you brought that up because I had several calls pertaining to two different classes where one kid was supposedly exposed to directly directly exposed to someone. Turned out that kid was all said and done. But the whole class was at home for for two weeks. Well, don't do any good if you go get your negative test and the doctor clearance from the doctor and that's in our guidance letter that we sent out. If, if there's no if you can't carry the kid back to school and there's no teacher there to teach. <clears throat> so I've had two two classes where that's happened in, in the four class three or four. All I can say is it is a struggle. It is a daily struggle with getting 34 different groups of administrators, and I say groups because there's more than one at each school, and 34 nurses. You would think that it's black and white and it's easy to understand, but there are so many different, you know, I mean, you, if you're a close contact, but you've already had COVID, then you're not even supposed to be sent home on quarantine because you've already had COVID. But the person who's had COVID doesn't have to tell you they've had COVID because it's a health issue, it's a privacy issue. So there are so many different factors, but I will tell you, that's why we put the letter out to begin with, was to try to get everybody on that same page where we're saying the same thing across 34 schools. 
So I'll just have to revisit that with everybody and just make sure that they know. I, they, I have told them not to call Dr. Thompson. Which uh, you know, so, we I, have a letter from a doctor. That's their job. I agree. And they would examine these kids. And I took my daughter yesterday with a full examination, negative test, full examination, almost like a physical, so she could get in and enjoy homecoming week. She's been elected to homecoming court. And she was fixed it. He said, oh, if I didn't have the means to take off work, go do this, she would be sitting at home because I didn't have the capability to do that. And that is wrong. I know. That is benefiting that child's mental state. So and what I, our, I'm tired. I'm, I'm so, so what tired. our nurses are doing is working specifically through the schools to make our itinerary nurses and, and nurse Cindy is working specifically with schools to make sure that the kids who are being sent home in close contact really should be being sent home as close contact. Because what we've seen, we've seen a, a difference in the number of kids sent home as close contact from school to school. So we're just going to have to be, the nurses are going to have to be involved with making those decisions. Um, those can't be decided just by an administrator. We're going to have to pull in a second set of eyes and really look at those seating charts and the amount of time they've been together before we just blanket say these kids have to go home. So. I can't tell you it's going to change, but I can hope for the best. I mean, I can tell you it's going to get better because we're going to involve our, our nurses. But this is going to be an issue as long as we have these guidelines in the place. That six foot for 15 minutes is what killed us. Um, you know, Dr. Mackey has gone back for us with ADPH and tried to get them to say three feet for 15 minutes because we're required to wear a mask. Um, but they have not. They will not come off that six feet for 15 minutes. So we've just got to be very, very <coughs> meticulous and careful to make sure that we truly are following that six feet for 15 minutes. Uh, and my, not you know, over feet, feet. Five feet, 25 feet, 30 feet. An assistant principal, unless they have a doctor's degree and graduated from the American Medical Association and have a certified certificate of practice of medicine, they don't have a reason to stand in the door like Joe Wallace did. He was 60 and 50 might have come in the door. No, and they've been told that they get a letter from the doctor. It says what it's supposed to say, bring it in. On it. Please. And if the word is not plagiarized in their opinion, you know, it has to read the certain word verbiage. That lady had to leave again yesterday to get the verbiage changed so she could get her dollar back. That's. I would say I, I, on that real quick, I'll end that. But. The, the six foot, 15 minutes, 15 seconds, whatever. That's going to be, that's difficult for anybody to even assume what that was. Yes, I mean, how do I know that kid was 14 minutes, 45 seconds? Because I could say that and no one ever questioned because I say it wasn't 15 minutes. But I do agree that we have got to administration wise in schools, nurse wise in schools. That, if this is the policy, this is the guidelines in your packet, you do not have the ability to sway from that, change it, go on your own. If you do, as Randy said, and I don't want to be like this, but one, it, put, it, it could put us in the school system in a lawsuit situation very quick that we don't need. It could put that individual nurse or administrator in that lawsuit tag, which I'm pretty sure they don't want, but they do submit. But I think it may have to be put, and I know that the Alabama Department of Health, is, it changes daily, weekly, who knows, it changes all the time. But as it changes, they have got to be sure that they put across the board, this is it, this is how we do it. You don't, you don't have the option to change it. We don't care what your agenda is, what your preference is, however, if you just elect to do that, there's got to be consequences. We as a board of school system, we're going to have to hold that person accountable because we don't and they continue doing it. And then there is a $50 million lawsuit comes down the line, which everyone thinks is a joke won't happen, but it will happen. People go lawsuit crazy these days over things far less than this. When it comes to kids in education and medical, they will. So that's why it's so important that our staff this week to maybe next Monday afternoon, it becomes a different direction. Have to stay on board with every time we change that and do not decide on their own decision. And like I said, if we don't hold them accountable for going on their own making different, it ain't gonna change and it ain't gonna stop. So, you know, if we're talking about someone maybe this and feel like they can do what they want, but we're 
We may have to just step up and say, no, you're not. Here's what's fixing to happen. Maybe you're going to get some time off. I, I don't know, but, you know, you'll, they'll do something you can't do that, but yeah, you can. And that's in our right. I mean, yeah, we may be paying this plan, this benefit still, but we can do them. Things. So I do agree with Randy on that. They have got to be consistent. If it starts with Nurse O'Quinn saying you're responsible, make sure all whatever, 20, 50 nurses, whatever it is, follow this guideline until it's, we tell you it changes and there's no variance from it, then she's responsible to make sure that happens. So ultimately she can be held accountable. Same with administrators. They've got to let their assistants know that this is how we're going to do it. You, do, I mean, I, I, it's amazing to me how many people think that if you have a policy in place that they can just sit there and on their own change the policy and decide to do it differently. They don't understand there's a reason policy are set and there's a reason they're there. They may not understand them, but they don't have the authority or position to change them. And that seems to be happening quite rapid lately, rampant everywhere. Um, this has been the hardest one for people to, and, and part of that reason, I'm not trying to defend anybody, but part of that reason is because it has changed so often. And the interpret, even the interpretation of the policies have changed. So, um, like I just saw an article yesterday that said the CDC has now come out with something else about 615. The six feet for 15 minute rule was what we were already doing, but they made it sound like it was new. So it's like there's different interpretations even of policy. They say that things so, change a lot that people don't even know, kind of like health department now, you know, symptoms have changed. Yes. It's, it's the amount of fever, loss of taste or smell. Just because you got to run a nose and cough now does not mean you got to be sent home. Exactly. But yet there'll be that employee or system who will send a person home, even though it's not correct anymore. And, you know, and I know they're getting told these things and I know it changes daily and maybe they, uh, they that's why it's so important that they understand, stay on top of where we're at and follow it. And, and when they don't follow it, we can't just sit back anymore and say, well, they didn't understand because it's gonna put us in a problem soon. Whether they realize or not, we're, 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 it's going to put us in a big problem that we don't need. We've got enough trouble with virtual learning and everything else we're trying to manage as a school system to have employees just decide on their own they're going to change the rules. I will um, relay that to them. And I understand their pressure they're under. I really do. But all of us in life, no matter what you do, get under pressure, but it doesn't mean you change the rules again. Well, what we try to tell them is the policy is the policy, whether we like it or not. So, because there may be some that, that like it and some who don't like it, and for me, different reasons and all in between. But it doesn't, it's. And we've all had a job. We've all worked. We've all had a job where there's policies that we agree with some of those, some of them we know. Right. But, we, but that's what we do. That's we what we're running. That's the guideline you follow. Absolutely. You signed up for working so. I just want them to understand what it could cause us as a school system by not, especially when it is medically evolving around the Alabama State Health Department's guidelines that you go against and then on your own change something that could really turn into something not a road we don't want to go down. If we won't, we, we will, as good as Ray is, if we get into that kind of battle, we're probably going to lose. But it's have immunity if you follow the uh, APD's uh, right. But if we don't, guidelines. When you don't, you're out on your own. And uh, yes, you do have liability. So our biggest issue is the APDH says you cannot test out of quarantine, and they said that doctors should not be writing those notes. And and they even said that they're going to give the doctors guidance that says you can't write those notes. However, they have not done that. The, they, they told us in the toolkit, this is the guideline that doc, you can't test out of quarantine. But yet they've not told the doctors not to write the notes to test out of quarantine. Well, when we get the letter to, that, from the doctor that says this child's clear to come back, then it's our obligation to take the letter from the doctor. And that's what's caused the confusion because the ADPA says, no, you can't do this. Doctors are doing this. Honestly, it doesn't matter to me 
one way or the other, but it's put school systems in the middle because we've got two different factions telling us to do two different things. And until they get together, we're going to follow the guidelines to the best of our ability, and we're going to take the letters from the doctor until something changes. If something changes, it may not. And I have said that until I, I no matter how the guidelines change, we're going to that's what Ray said. That's why I brought this this concern. Okay. What I was that it, you know, ADPH may be telling us that can change, but whatever it is. But until it's in their packet written guideline, we have to go by their last written guideline, which is what we're going by. So if we check, if we have somebody changes that, and a parent gets upset, and says, "You don't allow my kid back. Here's my negative test. Here's my doctor note. You're refusing it." And then now we're not following that guy. Like, they get their family record and get say, and trust me, there's something out there. I'd love to see that. Go like, yep, I'm gonna take that one because they know it's an easy path. It's gonna be an easy path for them because there's nothing we can say or do. No hands up. Like, You're right. We didn't follow. Them. So it, it's that's why it's important because there's gonna be if we continue doing this, and, and I think this will continue on because this ain't going away tomorrow. Guidelines may change weekly, monthly, maybe it's next January, maybe it's 20, 27. I don't know when it'll end. What they will. And guidelines will change. And if we don't stay a hold of that guideline, eventually that one time is going to happen. And that one family is going to stand up and say, no. And then we're going to have to go to that school or whoever decided to opt on their own to do this. And I hate for it when that happens and we call them down here because it's going to get ugly. That's in bad. So I would, for the sake of us as a board and school system, I, I really need those administrators, whoever, nurses, to please follow this before you put us in a position that's going to put us in a bad situation and in return to them in a situation they don't want to be.